Another terrorist attack has rocked Jammu and Kashmir today. A grenade blast at one of the busiest bus stands in Jammu. The police says Hezbul Mujahideen was behind it. One teenager was killed, 30 others have been hurt. This comes exactly three weeks after the terrorist attack in Kashmir's Pulwama. A manhunt was launched immediately after the strike. The attacker has been caught. In the initial rounds of questioning, he has confessed to his crime. His name is Yasir Javed Bhatt. He is son of Javed Ahmed Bhatt, resident of Khanpura, Dasen. He is also known by the name of Arhan. In the preliminary interrogation, he has revealed that he was tasked to throw this grenade by the district commander of Hijbul Mujahideen in Kulgam by the name of Farooq Ahmad Bhatt alias Umar. Meanwhile, the Pakistan government continues to drag its feet on Masood Azhar. On Tuesday, Vion had reported that the Interior Ministry of Pakistan has recommended the arrest of the Jaish-e Mohammed chief. The ball was in the court of Prime Minister Imran Khan and it's still there. He has taken no decision or he's not been given a signal by his military masters. Now sources in the Pakistan government say that the Prime Minister wants to consult opposition leaders and more importantly, defence chiefs before he can decide. Of course, he wants to consult with the defence chiefs. His global PR effort, meanwhile, is already crumbling. The government of Pakistan said that it is cracking down on terror, but it continues to shield terrorists, terrorists like Hafiz Saeed. Pakistan has blocked the United Nations from interviewing Hafiz Saeed, the mastermind of the 2611 terror attack in Mumbai. Some time back, Hafiz Saeed had moved a proposal. He wanted to get himself removed from the, from the United Nations sanctions list. For that purpose, an official from the United Nations must conduct an in-person interview of Hafiz Saeed. That is the procedure for delisting. That is what Hafiz Saeed wanted. So the UN appointed an independent ombudsman to evaluate the plea. But the ombudsman cannot interview Hafiz Saeed. The Pakistani government is not allowing him access. It has refused to grant visa to the United Nations representative, as a result of which the UN has now rejected Hafiz Saeed's plea. That should be good news, news that India should welcome. But here's the catch. Sources told Vion that this ombudsman, this UN representative, had already found sufficient evidence to keep the ban on Hafiz Saeed. This recommendation was endorsed by the United Nations Sanctions Committee. So the Pakistani government decided to block the representative to avoid more embarrassment and to risk being exposed further. These are critical times. Hafiz Saeed, remember, was banned by the UN Security Council back in 2008. This was right after the terrorist attack in Mumbai. In 2017, Hafiz Saeed filed an appeal with the United Nations through a Lahore-based firm. He could file a UN appeal while he was still under house arrest in Pakistan. So much for crackdown. Meanwhile, the focus remains on the other big terror mastermind in Pakistan, Masood Azhar. We have no doubt about his outfit, the jaish e Mohammed's role in terror attacks in India. But for those who have, here is a clinching answer. And this answer comes from none other than Parvez Musharraf, former president and army chief of Pakistan. When General Musharraf was president, jaish e Mohammed was routinely used to attack India. Musharraf has said it in so many words himself. He was giving a telephonic interview to a Pakistani channel. The clip has gone viral because here Parvez Musharraf is revealing Pakistan's worst kept secret. He has confirmed the tie-up between the government and terrorist groups. The question then is, if it bothers General Musharraf so much, if it pricks his conscience, why did he not break this nexus when he was in power, when he was president, when he was army chief? Why did Musharraf not take action against the terror outfit during his tenure? He was asked this question and this was his response. <laughs> He did not insist, he says. Musharraf's stance is in line with most Pakistani heads of state. 
push terror, create terrorist sanctuaries in Pakistan and when they hurt you, blame India. Musharraf's statements are particularly bizarre because in the same breath he also says that the jaish e mohammed tried to kill him. He says he was the target of at least two assassination attempts by the jaish e mohammed It's a bit hard to digest which head of state will not act against a group that tries to kill him. Forget head of state, which individual in his right mind will do nothing against a group that tries to kill him. इन्होंने ही तो मेरे ऊपर सुसाइड अटैक किया तो और तो बाकी तो लिहाजा ये टेररिस्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है और इनके खिलाफ कार्रवाई पूरी होनी चाहिए आई एम वेरी हैप्पी कि गवर्नमेंट टफ स्टैंड ले रही है इनके खिलाफ सो नाउ बिलेटेडली जनरल मुशर्रफ इज वेलकमिंग रिपोर्ट्स ऑफ अ क्रैक डाउन ऑन द जैश ए मोहम्मद द क्रैक डाउन व्हिच इज आल्सो अ फार्स बट एट लीस्ट दिस इंटरव्यू हैज अगेन पुट ऑन रिकॉर्ड द गवर्नमेंट्स कॉन्फ्लुएंस विद टेररिस्ट्स Now here are a few questions that come to mind after hearing General Musharraf's comments. The gist of this interview is this: one, that successive governments in Pakistan have failed to take action against terrorist outfits because they work with Pakistan intelligence agencies to attack India. If a former Pakistani president confirms this, what should India do? Take action. And if the Indian government takes tough action against terrorism in Pakistan, should Pakistan not welcome India's actions? If it really is a peaceful country, like its Prime Minister Imran Khan claims. Point number two: the timing of Musharraf's comments. Pakistan is on a tight deadline with a financial action task force. They have to prove that they are stopping terror funding. If Pakistan's ruling establishment cannot take action against against outfits like the Jaish e Mohammed, should institutions like the FATF show lenience to Islamabad? Point number three: If Pakistan's government, intelligence agencies, and terror outfits like JEM work with the same goals, that is to target India, shouldn't India declare Pakistan a terror state? Perhaps Imran Khan should consider taking a deep, hard look in the mirror and answer these questions. But then again, they do not need Parvez Musharraf to expose them. They do a pretty good job of it themselves. For starters, the Pakistan government and ministers cannot make up their mind on some very basic questions. Is Masood Azhar in Pakistan? Does the government of Pakistan know his whereabouts? We know the answer to both these questions is yes, but the Imran Khan government is tying itself up in knots trying to answer. Then they got mixed up with numbers. How many Indian pilots did Pakistan have in its custody last week? First they said two, then they said one. Now they say three. It's incredible. They need an abacus. Oh, Hindustan ke mix ne Pakistan ki retaliation me border cross kia, unko shoot down kia gaya, aur me ye bhi aaj kya na chahtu ki pilots hamare saath hain. The one leading Pakistan's Ministry of Confusion is none other than its Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi. His interviews to global TV stations on Masood Azhar have made him a flip-flopper of epic proportions. First, Mr. Qureshi asked India to hand over proof. He said Pakistan needs proof to arrest Masood Azhar. This was after the Jaish e Mohammed itself had claimed responsibility for the Pulwama attacks, and yet Mr. Qureshi wanted actionable evidence or proof from India. Then he referred to Masood Azhar as JEM chief. He said Masood Azhar is seriously unwell and he is not in a position to leave his house. In another interview, Mr. Qureshi said that the Jaish e Mohammed is not responsible for the Pulwama attack. How did he know? He was asked this question, and so Mr. Qureshi said on camera that the Jaish e Mohammed quote unquote leadership had confirmed it to him. He said the government of Pakistan was in touch with them. Mr Qureshi further said that people who are known to Jaish claim no responsibility and in the same breath he invited India for talks is he optimistic or is he delusional you decide let me also tell you that Mr Qureshi is not the lone culprit here Pakistan's army has beaten all in making u turns army spokesperson major general Asif Ghafoor says that the Jaish e Mohammed does not exist in the country then he contradicted himself by saying that the responsibility for the pulwama attacks did not come from the jaish e mohammed inside pakistan and wait there is more another u turn major gafur said that action against jaish e mohammed is not being taken under anybody's pressure how does this even work if the jaish e mohammed does not exist at all in pakistan as the army spokesperson said then who is mr qureshi speaking to 
And who is he referring to when he says Jaish e Mohammed leadership? Again, if the Jaish does not exist in Pakistan, why is the army spokesperson saying that the responsibility for Pulwama did not come from the Jaish e Mohammed operating inside Pakistan? Where is the Jaish e Mohammed then? And we are not done with that yet. As Major Gafoor said, if the Jaish e Mohammed is proscribed in Pakistan, can the government show the list of actions taken against it? And if Pakistan is not taking action against anyone under anyone's pressure, why did the government place 44 members of banned organizations under preventive detention yesterday? And that list, by the way, includes two members of Masood Azhar's family, the head of Jaish e Mohammed. In simple words, if there are no terrorists in Pakistan, who is the government cracking down on? Major Gafoor may be a seasoned soldier, but numbers are not his strong suit. Soon after the Indian airstrikes in Balakot, he tweeted from his personal handle that two Indian aircraft had been shot down inside the Pakistani airspace. One pilot was arrested, two others were in the area. That's what he said. Fact check now. It was one aircraft and one pilot. Wing Commander Abhinandan Vartaman, who is now back in India. Where are the other two? And the missing aircraft? Major Gafoor has not answered and I doubt he will.